In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the privilege of seeing today, so recording has started. Unto or not in, like I posted on Facebook, is not the alarm that woke you up. No, not at all. You may have set alarm for one meeting at five o'clock, six o'clock, or even seven a.m., and you discover that you uh, based on the alarm, but it wasn't really alarm that woke you. God woke you up. The alarm was just being used as an instrument. And the scripture says that it is of the Lord's mercy we are not consumed. For his love, for his mercy, and for his compassion towards us. We want to praise his holy name this morning. Shall we come out? Thanks to him. I'm not that we put it in us in our wives. God has been so in our entire family. We are not lost. Thank you, Lord. Not our people. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's praise him. Let's worship him. Glory to God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for God's you are good. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord. You are good. You are a great God. You are a mighty God. You are a loving God. You are a faithful God. You are merciful. Who is like unto you? Oh. Our gracious Lord, thank you for salvation. We pray. Thank you. Amen. I want to read something now carefully uh, this morning. Uh, in in this in the Word of God, we find something that happened to a man called David in First Chronicles chapter twenty one. And Satan stood up against Israel. Now, the many problems that we find in family today, some of them cannot be diagnosed medically by psychologists, by philosophers, by even so-called uh, medical practitioners or whoever. Some of them are spiritual, uh, are spiritual on that zone. Satan stood up against Israel. And in other words, there are families that Satan can stand up against, but the only way to enter that family could just be through the head, through the leader. And so the head of the family as the man could take an irrational decision, and that will plunge the family into trouble, a perpetual trouble, a permanent trouble. And then yeah, he did something, <sighs> So when Satan was defeated, he provoked David to number Israel. Something that looks innocent. Something that looks innocent. But yet, there was spiritual connotation and manipulation. And David wasn't aware. David thought it was his own thought. That's why he was to the brilliant with the devil and the emissaries of Satan in our home, in our family. This, the devil is fighting the last battle. He wants to make sure that he obliterates. He, he wastes a lot of family. Our family will not be wasted by any character by us in his name. So Amen. we are trying that we will be sensitive enough so be spiritual enough to know that this one is coming from Satan. And we be like Christ our Lord, who knew that it was Satan that was speaking when he said, command this stone to be made bread. Actually, Jesus could do that very easily. But if Jesus had done that, 
they would have been obeying the commandment and the instruction of Satan. And that will not occur well at all. It is not about just doing the right thing. It is about the motive. It is about who is instigating you to do it. It is about who is asking you to do it. You remember in scripture where those, uh, the, the spirit of divination was speaking to that young girl and he was saying, the men of God, if I want to put Hello, sir. And so revealing to us that these are the men of God who show to us the way of salvation. Now, if somebody was not sensitive to the Holy Spirit or having the assignment of the Spirit, yes, yeah, the young lady was doing the right, he was saying the right thing. I hope we know that. It was right. She was right by virtue of what she was saying. But she was using another spirit and the spirit of definition for the apostle, a spiritual man, knew that yes, the sentences may be all right, the sentences may be doctrinally okay, but the spirit behind it is the spirit of divination. Oh my God. Lord Jesus, you will make us spiritual. You will make us spiritual. You will make us spiritual at the end of the family. That the wife will say something we can detect. That this is not coming directly from my wife. It will be a suggestion from the pit of air to plunge the family into trouble. We want to go before the Lord this very morning. A very serious prayer this day. A very serious prayer this morning. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Do you see what happened here? In verse 2, and David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, go, number Israel from Bethsheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Now, is it a sin to number? Not at all. Is it not a sin? It's not a sin. We take attendance in the church and even in the, in the, in the, in the land of Israel, we knew the men were 600, we knew they were about 3 million. How did we know? Because numbering was allowed. But at this point in time, the motive behind the numbering was diametrically opposed to the instruction of God. The motive behind the numbering was egocentric, was pride, was from Paul City. David wanted to know how powerful probably he was. And so the motive became uh, distorted. And the motive became a perverted motive. And so it became so clean. I want to go before God. First and foremost, I want to ask the Lord to have mercy upon all. Where we have taken some irrational decision and uh, our motive were not right, our motive were not okay, you find a man trying to manipulate the wife. And then he will go here, go here, dribble the wife, and it will not come out straight. It will not come out clean. He will not come out straight to say this. But because he wants to manipulate, he wants to have his way, he wants to manipulate. Let's pray in the name of Jesus, where we allow Satan, the subjection of Satan, where we have allowed the provocation of Satan. And we have done things that were irrational. And we have done things that were unscriptural. And we have done things that were not biblical. Let's pray that the Lord will cleanse and purge and purify with his precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Men pray, men pray. You'll find some people, they will, they, some young boys or young brother who want to marry. They, they will be saying they want to marry a sister that are prayerful. They want to be lazy and they are looking for sisters that are prayerful. Their understanding is that the woman is the one that keeps the oath. The woman is the one that must be prayerful. What a delusion. What a delusion from the pit of hell that you are waiting down till you get a woman who is prayerful before you marry. And then you want to be redundant. And that's why you find some men, they are going about, they are looking for sisters who are prayerful. Why they themselves are prayerless? The devil will invade that house. The devil will invade that home. You as the head, as the gatekeeper, you are not prayerful and you are not keeping the, 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 the door and keeping the enemies of Satan of the home. I am telling you something. Men must understand we are the gatekeeper. The women are not the gatekeeper. Yeah, they may they may they may go. When we talk about the gatekeeper, we are talking of the men at the gate. We are talking of the men that will confront the Philistine. We are talking of the men that will confront Goliath. 
We're talking of the men that we confront, the Amorites and the Amalekites. They are the men, the men. It's not enough to just show masculinity against the woman, against the wife. This is spiritual. Let's pray that God will check us off. We examine all. We purge us. We cleanse all. We purify all. Purge us, Lord. Purify us in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray by your grace and by your power. Let your cleansing blood, your cleansing power, oh God, cleanse me and purge me and purify me. Amen. Well, amen. amen. In verse 1, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. I want to pray. Where Satan and his emissaries are standing against our family, the Lord will crush his plan and manipulation against our family. If he's planning already something against us this year, whatever, any trap he has set, that will be falling into it. Do you know it? A trap can be set. A trap can be set for a family. But we're going to point where we're not falling into the trap of the enemy. Do you know Satan set trap a lot? All these emissaries of Satan, they set trap a lot. They say, don't worry, that woman will be angry soon. And that woman will provoke her husband soon. And then the husband will misbehave. And the husband will even cause and lay cause. And then before you know, they throw a trap against the man. The man fall in and probably die. But they cannot get the man until the man commits sin. They can't get the man until the man goes into evil. They can't get the man until the man does something that is totally against Satan. And so we're going to pray and tell the Lord right now this morning, where the devil is setting trap for, we will not fall into the trap of the enemy. That we pray. We will not fall into the trap of the enemy. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. And when the, end, when the enemy, who go Father, setting trap, who Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, I will not fall into the trap of the enemy. I will not fall into the trap of the wicked in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray. All the plans of the enemy, all the plans of Satan, the plan to the trap to sin, the plan to go to fall into sin. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will cancel it. Amen. Let's understand we are not just men, we are also ministers of God. And they look at the Samson King. Now, the Samson was a threat, just like some of us were attracted to the powers of darkness. And then they looked they at, look it, at it. How, how can we captivate? How can we incapacitate this man? Eventually, they felt the only way they could uh, uh, get him is to use his weak point. Something had a weak point. Let's understand something. It was not Delilah that wasted the life of Samson. It was his own lust that wasted him, I repeat. It wasn't Delilah that wasted something. It was something lost. Something had a problem with lust. And the problem of, you know, I will say this, and I want to say it again. Anything you fail to do something about will eventually do something about you. That lust had been in something. That lust had always been there. Going into this, going into this, uh, messing up with this, and having its way in this area, having its way in that area, eventually until he met with his Waterloo, until he met with his destruction and his ministry was cut short. That's why we want to check ourselves. Are there limitations? Are there weaknesses? Are there area the devil can get in? Are there area? Are there area? We call it um, in, the, in, the, in the business world, the management world, uh, what do you call it now? SWAT? Uh, talking about your strength, threats, your weakness and, and all of those things. So what are the areas of your weakness? What are the areas that the devil can get in and then you'll be up your feet? Well, and say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, do you know that some men of God, their weakness could just be issue of immorality. Maybe when they were in the world and then they have problem with fornication, problem with pornography and all that. And the devil will still want to capture them in that area. And then soon could be anger, 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 anger. Some could be one thing or the other. You want to pray. And something's life was wasted. A trap was set for him. You fell for that trap. I refuse to fall for the trap of the devil. 
I refuse to fall for the trap of the devil. They will not get me to any area of weakness. Oh God, all the weaknesses in my life, oh, take away, remove. Oh God, the devil will not get me. In the name of Jesus, pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, by your power, by your mind, the devil will not get me in any area who oh God he has said. I know your grace is available. I know your grace is sufficient. I know your grace is mighty. I know your grace is powerful. You are the God of power, the God of strength. Oh Lord, I pray you will deliver me, O oh God, Father, from sixth evil, from the seventh, O oh God, you will save me. O oh Lord, I pray all the evil determined against me. O oh Lord, I pray deliver, deliver me from it. Every weakness, O oh God, in my soul, every weakness in my life, O oh Lord, I pray give me victory, daily victory, momently victory, hourly victory, secondly victory over O oh God, every form of a weakness of the flesh in the name of Jesus. Oh Wait, Lord. Wait. Amen. Let's see something here. Another prayer point is rising up here for us. And Joab answered in verse 3. When David instructed that uh, Joab should go number, Joab was not a spiritual person. Let's understand. Joab was just the captain of the uh, captain of David in Judah. You know, uh, David was the king in Hebron, while Ishbosheth uh, was at, at another king somewhere uh, where Abner made him a king over there. And we saw what happened. And we saw what happened. Now, look at it in verse 3, and Joab answered, because after David had made the request, uh, Joab the captain was not trying to object. He knew that what David was requesting for was not right. He knew that what David was asking for was not scriptural. Uh, was not, not that was not scriptural. At that moment, it was not necessary. But look at what David did. And Joab answered, the Lord make his people and hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why will it be a cause of trespass to Israel? Can you imagine a, a whole Joab became spiritual at this time? Joab became even more sensitive, more sensitive than David, a spiritual man. We want to pray. I have a prayer point right there already, but I'm dropping that prayer point and I'm picking one that just came up. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. God will deliver us at our unguided moment. Do you know many men of God have been swept their feet at their unguided moment? Sometimes it was at the unguided moment a lady will just penetrate into their life. They themselves cannot understand how it came about. Then they say cannot say how it came about. They themselves cannot explain how they just mess up their life and mess up their ministry. At the unguided moment, at this point, David was unguided. At this moment, David was in a carnal moment. At this time, David was not spiritual at all, a spiritual man. And even Joab was rebuking him, was telling him, was correcting him. Let's pray and say, oh God, deliver us at our unguided moment. At our unguided moment. So, I just want to play it. Before you know it, something begin to set it. And then they will know what that was. They have been decision taking. Can I start? Can I behave your can I? And before you know it, the devil begin to suggest different things. They will think they are just taking normal decisions. But they will never know. It was a suggestion from the pit of air to plunge that family into trouble. What would you say about Ahimelech when he left Bethlehem Judah? It could be a suggestion, but he will not know. It could be a suggestion, but he will not know. He will just tell Naomi, Naomi, we are going to go. Without even, without even finding one out. And the wife carry a bag and carry and the children. But eventually, come on. The the two children died in the strange land. You see now? You see now? Let's go before the Lord now. The Lord will deliver us at our guidance. Shall we pray? Mighty Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will deliver me, O oh God, from my unguided moment, unguided hour. O oh God, I pray every hour, any time, any day, O oh God, Father, where I take decision outside your will, outside your my plan, Outside your decree, oh Lord, I pray, deliver me at my unguided moment. 
O oh God, mm-hmm. delivered me, O oh God, Father, for my weak hour. Deliver me, O oh God. Let your presence, let your power prevail over my life at all times in the name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of the Lord, O oh God, envelop me and lead me and guide me in every area of, of my life in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, I pray, let there be no hour. O oh God, help me not to take decisions outside your will. Help me not to take decisions outside your will. Help me not to take decisions outside your will. Because decision outside your will, O oh Lord, is like, O oh God, Father, we are Lord. Amen. Look at it again. A very powerful prayer point is coming here. And after David, Joab told uh, David, look at what David did here in verse 4. Nevertheless, the king swore prevail against Joab. <laughs> somebody who is going off target, somebody who is going the way of destruction, it could prevail over the man who became a spiritual momentarily. Now look at it. Wherefore, Joab departed. He doesn't have any say. Joab, if he resists too much, he can kill Joab. He can instruct that Joab be killed. You know, the king of those days, they can do undo, and nobody questioned them. And so Joab just had to gently depart, and then uh, he departed, and then he went ahead to carry out an instruction that led to the killing, to the destruction of many lives. Many lives were wasted. Look at it in verse 7. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore, he smote Israel. <laughs> It was God that smote Israel himself. Oh, it was God. It was then David now knew what he had done in verse 8. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly and have done this thing because now I beseech thee, do away with the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. You see now? You see very clearly. God even now have to give him three options. Choose one, the one I will do, the one you will pay. And those three options, no one was even okay, not even one. Eventually, about 70,000 men died in Israel. This led to 70,000 men dying. Can you see, men, how we need to be very careful that we do not plunge the entire family into trouble? Now, what happened here? What's the prayer point here? The prayer point goes thus. That David became self-willed. Self-willed. You see, sure, I'm the head of the family. I'm the head of the family. And then your wife is saying... Oni, don't you think this thing is too fast? Oni, women are highly, highly discerning and very sensitive. Your life can be rescued from danger and destruction if you know when to listen to your wife. I I, I use that word carefully. I didn't say listen to you. I said if you know when to listen to your wife. We are men of God. We are leaders. And we understand the statement I've just made. That may... It is not every time we listen to our wife. Yes, I can show you from scripture that it is not every time. If it is not absolute to listen to your wife every time, it can be calamitous. It can be dangerous. But knowing when to listen to her and obey her can save you from hey, premature death, from destruction, from going into the pit. If Joab, if David had listened to Joab, 70,000 men would not have died. They would have... Well, their eyes would have been preserved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, I will pick a particular call. I just rejected the call. Now, the person will say call back. His document is with me, so he's coming to my house. Okay, okay, okay. Share the answer. Now, so we are still praying. So we're going to pray every form of self-will in our life. Self-will. You wonder, you say, 
But when somebody is sanctified, can there be self-will? <laughs> hey, hey. Now, do you know that even the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the life of Peter, let's see it. Peter was still self-will. How? What do I mean? It's not the self-will. The, the scripture told them where to go. They were to start, they were to move on. Moving from here until persecution had to come and scatter them. They had to, they wanted to just remain, remain in one place, remain in somewhere. And these were people who were already baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were not just sanctified, they were baptized. They were filled, they were full, they were saturated, and yet some things were still in them until God had to use instrumentality of persecution to scatter them according to his perfect will. We want to beg God. All these uh, African men don't listen to wives and that have led to the destruction of many men. Uh, if you listen to your wife, they call you, uh, uh, ah, there's this name, is it woman rapper now? All those, uh, they are funny, funny things that are not scriptural. They tell you, eh? Yeah, all those kind of words like that. But they do not understand. They do not know that there are instructions you need to take from your wife that can. Hello, Pastor Mike, please take over the prayer. The person does not know my house. I have to go out now to man. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to continue the prayer. As we pray, our pastor has been leading us. I have been looking at the life of David. Uh, something dropped into my mind that as pastors and ministers and men of God are people who believe the Bible. Are there times in our lives that we have taken decisions? Decisions that is not guided by God, not directed by God, not led by the Spirit of God. Mm. And that has put someone in danger that has de caused destruction in families have we counseled someone that has led that person astray you know as i look at the life of david david lived where jesus was not there perhaps he lived at a time where the advocate has not been given but today we have the advocates. Today we have somewhere to run to. We have Jesus. We have we Christ. Have we have, we the, have blood the blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. We have the grace of God. I want you to pray, my brother. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, O oh God. Any decision I have taken contrary to your will, O oh negative, O oh God, Father, against your will, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Any decision you have taken that has led someone astray, any decision you have taken that has caused the life of someone, yeah. any decision you have taken, okay. let's call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, God, have mercy upon me. 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 My Father, have mercy.
mercy upon me, Jehovah. Have mercy upon me. Any decision I have taken, anyone I have cancelled wrongly, oh God, have mercy upon me. Whatever thing I have done, oh God, have mercy upon me. Oh Lord, even when I did that, then somebody counseled me, but I was so self will I was so eaten up by self. I was so eaten up by pride. Oh God, have mercy upon me. Oh God, have mercy upon me. It could be in the family. It could be in the family. Where your family counseled you, your, your wife counseled you, your daughter counseled you, your son counseled you, or you became so edgy, you became so edgy, stubborn, you became so obstinate. You wanted to have your way as the head of the family. You wanted, you wanted to do, to do what, what was in your heart. Let's call upon call the name of the Lord. Oh, God, God have mercy upon me. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Where my decision has led others astray. Where my decision has led to the death of someone. Where my decision has killed someone. Oh, Lord, be merciful. Oh, Lord, be merciful. Oh, Lord, be merciful. Oh, Lord, be merciful. Oh, God, show me your mercy. Oh, God, show me your mercy. Oh, God, show me your mercy. Oh, God. God, show me your mercy. Any invisible hand, any invisible hand controlling my life, oh God, to take the wrong decision. Oh Lord, I pray, let that power be destroyed. 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 Let that Destroy. Let the power be destroyed. Let the power be destroyed. Let the power be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we want to pray. What we are dealing today is a serious matter. I don't want to look holier than thou. I don't want you to become indifferent and say, it has never happened to me. I have not never com com committed such blunder. Mm. Beloved, I want you to pray. A decision you have taken, you have made over your life that has put your family into trouble. Mm. The permission you gave, the permission you allowed, you allowed the permission. You gave the permission, the permission in your family that has put your family into danger. Yeah. You gave an order, you gave a command, you gave an instruction that has put your life, even your own life, your family, into danger. We want to pray. Listen to me, beloved. I know the power of the mercy of God. Mercy of God is so strong and so great. I don't know what that decision you took. The effect it has or is having in your family now. You are going to pray every wrong decision I have taken. The effect of that wrong decision over my life, over my family, by the blood of Jesus. Let them be swallowed up. Open your mouth and call upon the name of the Lord. Every decision you are taking against the will of God, against the plan of God for your life. Open your mouth and call upon God. Let that decision, let that effect, the effect of that decision, the permission, the allowance I allowed in my life, in my family, the effect of that allowance, the effect of that decision, oh Lord, that negative effect, let it be swallowed up by the blood of Jesus. Be swallowed up by the blood. 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 In the name of Jesus, be swallowed up by the blood of Jesus. Be swallowed up by the blood of Jesus. I email he allowed something. He made a decision. A decision that put his family into danger. That killed his two sons. Oh God Almighty. What decision I have I taken? Oh Lord, contrary to your will. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, let that decision, let the effect of that decision be swallowed by the blood of Jesus. Be swallowed up by the blood. 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 If my heart condemn me, God is greater than my heart. Be swallowed up by the blood. Whatever decision I have taken, oh God, I have allowed, oh God. Whatever influence of Satan over my life, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Beloved, do you know that spiritual David, the David, the friend of God, the David, the psalmist of Israel, that same David, who was so loved by God, he made a decision. And that decision was contrary to the will of God. As a man of God, I did not tell you have made a decision. I did not tell you have made a decision. A decision you made that put your own life even at risk. A decision you made that put your own family at risk. I did not tell you gave a cancer to somebody. And that cancer was contrary to the will of God. Even though you are a man of God, even though you are a, a, a minister of God, but you took a wrong decision. And perhaps you never knew it was a wrong decision. For David, he even realized that he has taken a wrong decision and he asked for the mercy of God. But at the no time, you took a wrong decision and you thought that decision was all right. You took a wrong decision, you thought that decision was okay. You took a wrong decision and you thought you felt that decision was all right to take. And that decision, not only has that decision exposed your family to the attack of the devil, not only has that decision, that allowance, that permission that you allowed in your family, in your life, not only has it put your children in danger, you know, the effect of that decision upon your spiritual life. You know how that decision is now bleeding your life, destroying your life gradually. You know that that decision has the undertone of the devil, the hand of Satan over it. You know that that decision, that allowance, that permission was influenced, was orchestrated by the devil himself. You know that that decision you took, it has not only affected you, it affected your family, your wife, your daughter, your son, it has affected your, 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 your relation, it has affected your family, your sibling, it has affected, in fact, it has scattered things in your life, in your family, in your ministry. Beloved, I know a place, I know a place, I have always recommended people to that place. I know a place I can recommend for you. When things are so bad, when things have become ugly, I know a place, I know a man, I know one man, one man, one man, one man I can rec recognize for you. When you go there, when you go there, he has something he's going to tell you, he has something he's going to show you, he has something he's going to do in your life, and when he does it, I'm telling you, that thing, that problem, no matter how big it is, no matter how strong it is, no matter whether you know that place before, or you have never visited with the consciousness of God helping you. I know a place. That place is Calvary. That place is Calvary. That place is Calvary. The man I can recommend to you who had the final solution to all the matter of family challenges. That man is Jesus. He's the Son of God. You are going to pray. You are going to Calvary now. You are going to Calvary now. You are taking the problem. You are taking the challenge. The decision. You are taking that allowance. You are taking that oppression of the devil in your life, in your family. To the Lord in prayer. You want to pray, Lord. Oh God Almighty, where I took a decision. I made a decision that has plundered my family, destroyed my family, that has put my family into the wrong hands, into danger. Oh God, by the power of Calvary, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood that speaks better thing than the blood of Peter, by the blood of the everlasting covenant. Oh God, let every problem, every challenge, every torture, every torment in my family be swallowed up by the blood of Jesus and by the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, I pray. Oh Lord, I ask. Oh Lord, I beseech you. Where I took a decision, where I made a decision, where I gave an allowance, where I gave a permission, a permission in my family, into my family that has plundered my family. Oh God, I come to the place of the blood. I come to the place of the blood. Let the blood of Jesus correct upon every mistake. Let the blood of Jesus swallow, oh God, every hand of Satan, every hand of the devil in my life, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus swallow. 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 Everything, oh God, that is having the under of the devil, that is having the finger of the devil, that is having the hand of Satan. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, let that consequence be swallowed up, let that problem be swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray where I have made a mistake already. Oh God, where I have given room to 
hunger to strong over to penetrate my life and family. Holy Father, righteous God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let it be corrected by the blood of Jesus. Let it be amended by the blood of Jesus. Let it be corrected by the blood of Jesus. Let it be amended by the blood of Jesus. Where my wife has been put in danger, where my son has been put in danger, where my daughter has been put in danger, as a result of my decision, as a result of my allowance, as a result of what I permitted. Holy Father, by the blood of Jesus, oh God, I pray, put an end, oh God, to the affliction, put an end to the affliction, the affliction of the devil, the affliction of sickness, the affliction of torment, oh God, as a result of my mistake, holy Father, righteous God, I pray in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, put an end to it, 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 blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, swallow it, swallow it, the consequence of my mistake, swallow it, the consequence of my decision, swallow it, the consequence of my permission, swallow it, the consequence of my allowance, swallow it. Oh God, what I allowed, what I permitted, what I gave home to, oh God, what I permitted, what I allowed in my family, oh God, the consequence of that, my decision, the decision of many years ago, the decision of five years ago, the decision of 10 years ago, the decision of 20 years ago, oh God, I pray where that decision, oh God, is not affecting my life, inflating my life, destroying my life and my family, oh Lord, let the mercy of God swallow it all. I even like made that mistake many years ago, grown that is family oh god david also made a mistake that destroyed the life of innocent people oh god father i pray the uh, uh, something also made that decision he made a decision of a life that, that destroyed his life and ministry only god righteous god i am praying oh god by your mercy by your mercy by your mercy oh god let your mercy avail for me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let the name of jesus the bible says that the name of jesus is a strong Power. The righteous run to it and they are saved. That the name of the law, oh God, I come. Under the name of the law, I come. Under the coverage, I come. Under the covering, I come. Under the canopy, I come. Under the privilege, I come. Under the mercy, I come. Under the power, I come. Under the grace, I come. Under the fire of the law, I cover, 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 I cover. oh God, in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, Holy God, King of kings and Lord of lords, intervene in our families and ministries in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you as we continue, continue with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Over to you, Pastor Matthew. Amen. Yeah, okay. So, uh, okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, thank God. Yeah. You know, uh, Pastor Mark, I've gone to a uh, very deep uh, area today, and then I totally believe it is not flesh that revealed that thing to him. Uh, yes, Almighty sir. God revealed uh, it to him. Uh, I somebody like me, you know, I only like personal example. I thank God for my Christian journey. Uh, God so loved me so well. Even before I become born again, uh, there are a lot of people, they just love me naturally. For old people, uh, you see them, they have money, they have anything. I think your level system, you see them, they, they depend upon whatever I said. There are some things I can maneuver for myself. Not that I deliberately, but it is now I'm saying it's just like, okay, that's the way I want you to go. And they listen to me. They do it. Sometimes it destroys the life of many. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I totally believe. Sometimes you see many people through. Sometimes I don't even know that God loves me so much that he has put that... Uh, let me see, Mark or me. The, the another second one I see is the first time I know about the the scrap. I mean, is it the scrap or what is whatever they call it? When the wound is ill, but the scrap will be there. Is this do I pronounce it very well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
That, that was the first time I was in the in the headquarter. Then somebody asked about the that was the during the time HIV was rampant. And somebody asked GS that uh, if somebody has HIV, can he be forgiven? I I I remember that day vividly. It was just two statements. Yes, God will forgive you, but the scarf will be there. It is now I know understand what they cost car. My dear brother, my dear father and the law, my dear mother and the law, who saw on the on the line, that scarf is not easy. You know, it's not, it doesn't been removed. You will continue to be see it every day. But my total belief now, as Pastor uh, Mike Cray, is that many of us that we might have done that. You know, it's our, it's not our way. It is out of ignorance. There are something uh, leader in the church they were totally against. But they love me so much is that, and they warned me that okay, you are my we are uh, uh, you are our son, and we are warning you that I do not do this thing. As our son, we won't leave you alone. We are you are still our son. But when the consequence comes, do not come unto us. That you want this in indirect way, because we, you know you will still continue to be our son. So when the consequence just bear it, uh, it is now I see there's a danger in both. But uh, the no wonder Sammy say, for somebody God is forgiven, that particular person is blessed. As we are talking about it, I remember the judgment of David. It is not easy. Can you imagine you have a child? Yes, it's out of immorality. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not lose our children in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you imagine the judgment? The child died. Imagine. It is now I know what the if of that judgment, it is now I know what the pain is. No matter what the situation. God will forgive us our sin. We will not lose our child. We will not lose what is present to us in the name of Jesus Christ. But look at the pain. That's why he said the scarf will continue to be there. Look at the pain of losing his son. Look at that pain. But we will still call upon the name of the Lord. God, many of us, we have done a lot in the past just because you love us. You say for us, but it is out of ignorance totally. Yes, we are bearing the cost. Many times, uh, I won't deceive you. Many people call me and they will say, Pastor Mercy, God, Lord, God just love you. You are receiving mercy. I've told you about one of our friends. I very close to God. I'm, when you say it's close to God, very close to God, he just stopped calling me. What happened? He didn't pick my call. He didn't call. I, I, what happened? He said, later, I, I agree so that he picked my call. He said, Brother Matthew, I've been receiving a lot of attack due to your cases. And I said, if you, that you are talking to me, you are discussing together, you are receiving attack. What about me? He said, you receive mercy. You have been receiving mercy. Oh. Many, many people, I mean, the servant of the Lord, the, if, um, if deliver one believer, they have always been telling me, that Matthew, it is mercy you are receiving. You now call upon the name of the Lord. The mercy is not enough. If many of us will show you the pain we are passing through as a favor as a as a as a favor of the Lord that disobey him. But before you, before God now, I'm saying many things, many of us did, it was out of ignorance. We know we are a spoiled child. It is earned. But it is out of going around. We are not going, going to call up upon the name of the Lord. The fact many of us are going through that, that God should look at the, the, the mercy in the blood of Jesus Christ is endless. It has no limitation. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will forgive us in Jesus' name. 
And may, as you know, as many people are not part, they are, God must have revealed this to Pastor Mike, or he has somebody in mind, or maybe he too have passed through it, I, I, which I don't want to believe that. I just believe that God has revealed it to, to him. Man, as many people that are going through that, yes, God forgive them, but the scarf is there. That by the power and the blood of the mercy of the Lord, we not stop on forgiveness. He will eat them totally in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. As many that is going to eat, that by the power of the Lord, look at that prayer. David lost the child. Look at the pain. Around the Canada for us, if it's not Pastor Mike Randall for us, I can't see my computer. Uh, I don't think Pastor your means around Pastor Mike Randall for us, Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to honor you. We want to reverence you for the way you have led us this morning. Thank you, Father, for our leader who you have given, oh God, the direction who has led us in this path. And by your grace, we have been able to pray, oh God, in line with the scripture in this way. And Father, we pray and we ask. Our pastor has just told us that there are some cases that we see where families have been plundered, where a lot of things are happening, but he always made mention of mercy. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your mercy, oh God, and all families, all families going through one time, one thing or the other, or going through one challenge or the other as a result of the decision that have been taken many, many years ago. Oh Lord, that is now affecting the family one way or the other. And we see the scar, oh God, Father, upon the family. Oh Lord, you are the healer, oh God, Father of the soul. You can heal the body, soul, and spirit. Oh God, I pray, oh family that have been wounded, oh family that have been wounded, of oh, every form of wound upon the family, whether spiritual or physical, whether financial or otherwise, Oh God, I am praying because of your mercy. Let your mercy go into every family one by one. You know the challenges in every family. You know the problem in every family. Let the blood of Jesus, oh God, swallow up every challenge, every scar in the family, even this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We come before you. We are praying that Lord, your mercy will prevail in every family. We Amen. pray that your grace will prevail in every family. We Amen. pray that Lord that we heal our family one by one in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Amen. To pray, oh God, that as a result of today's prayer, oh Lord, I pray testimony will begin to come from all Amen. our family of the mighty hand of God, of the mercy of God, of the greatness of God, of the manifestation of your power. Let it be so in Jesus. 
Jesus' name. Amen. As we go out this week, let your presence go with us. Let the power rest upon us. Guide us and lead us so that we don't take the wrong decision. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And let us continue to invite people. Let people draw their prayer requests on the our platform. And God will help us as we are doing so in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 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 the love Lord, of God, Lord, the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Surely, we can let it follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Accept all our praises as we give all honor to you, the Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah, hallelujah. O Lord, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> o Lord, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders, hallelujah. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Let us sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name, for the Lord is good. Joyful song. And praise his name. Let us sing, amen, rejoice, amen. Glory be to our God, amen. Rejoicing, amen. Glory be to our God, amen. 
let us sing, amen, rejoicing, amen, glory be to our King, amen. Amen, glory be to Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is the same today, a mighty to save. Today and forever is the same today.